Dear Tesla, Jesse and I love you. We've always loved you. But I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at Klima. If you're watching us, then you probably already have accepted, like Elon has, that climate change is the biggest challenge of our generation. Yeah, climate consequences will affect all of us more than we often dare to admit. So like Elon, let's not just sit back and trust others will solve this for us. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get everyone involved by making climate action simple, effective, and rewarding. And that's where Klima comes in. With an affordable monthly subscription, you can plant trees, promote green energy projects, and improve lives around the globe. All while learning about climate healthy living and inspiring others to get involved. And with Klima, it's easy to go carbon neutral. You can calculate your carbon footprint in just three minutes. From there, you can choose your own offset strategy, all with certified sustainable projects around the globe. Then you can track your impact, like keeping track of the trees you've planted, for instance. And you can invite your friends to join Klima and track how your climate impact multiplies. Join us and go carbon neutral with Klima today and get 10 extra trees planted in your name. It's simple. Just click the link below and enter our code now you know 10 to claim your trees and help us create even more awesome content for you. Let's make our planet a greener place together. Thank you to Klima for all the awesome work they do and for sponsoring us. And today's episode is sponsored by Henson Shaving. I really like my Henson Shaver. It's what I've been using for the past few months. You can pick up yours and get 100 blades for free if you use the code now you know at checkout. This episode is about a problem that we think Tesla currently has and one which we think could get much worse this year. If you watch this channel at all, you know that Zach and I are the biggest Tesla fans in the world. We have traveled across the country and covered practically every Tesla event for the past six years. We've worked hard to get more butts in seats and quite frankly, sell more Teslas than anyone. So much so that one of the number one questions we get is, do you work for Tesla? Heck, we've dedicated practically every waking hour to help Tesla with their mission to advance EVs and sustainable energy by doing this show and Tesla Time News every week for the past seven years. But you know this, when your best friend is having trouble, when your best friend might be making a big mistake, it's hard. It doesn't usually go down well, but sometimes you have to say something. Say something. Okay, so I want this to go up in big text on screen because I don't want anyone to miss this. Zach and Jesse love Tesla, period. In the spirit of love and wishing the best for Tesla, we think it's necessary to share a shortcoming that we have seen for some time and we think is going to get worse. We know Tesla has the ability to fix this problem and feel confident that Elon and Tesla would want to fix it if they only knew about it. It is out of our love and respect for everything Tesla does that we are sharing our thoughts with you today. Okay, so were we clear? We are not here to bash Tesla. If you want that kind of content, there are plenty of other places on the internet you can go. We are Tesla fans, fanboys, bulls, whatever you want to call us. But that said, we are not cult members. We do not blindly follow if there is a problem you know us, we speak up. We have done it plenty of times in the past, so this episode should be no shocker. Okay, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about something that in our opinion has been hit or miss with Tesla for a long time, Tesla service. We're not talking about the cars themselves. I think that they are designed and built really well. We're talking about if you own a Tesla and you have some kind of problem, as all cars are going to have from time to time. Whether it's something that's the driver's fault, like curb rashing the wheel or bumping into something and breaking off a side view mirror. Or something that goes wrong with the car, like a door handle stops or a blower vent that stops working properly. Cars need service, it's just a fact. Unlike some items that you own that only live for a year or two before they become obsolete or break unfixably, cars, especially EVs, last a long time. Tesla's motors are rated at a million miles, don't forget. So over the years, the seasons, the thousands of miles, the potholes, they are going to need fixing from time to time. So when that day comes that something isn't working right with your Tesla and you need to schedule an appointment, the way you do it today is you open up your Tesla app. You hit the service button and you answer a couple questions. You type in a little text, maybe attach a photo, and you hit send. Tesla then schedules either a mobile ranger to come out to you or schedules for you to bring your Tesla to your nearest Tesla service center. Okay, in theory, that sounds great. In fact, it sounds amazing. 
I mean, I haven't owned an ICE car in years, but we both own Nissan Leafs and we have tons of friends and acquaintances who own ICE cars. And I've never heard of such an easy way to schedule a service. I mean, a mobile service van that will drive up to your work or house and fix your car. Zach and Jesse, what are you complaining about? In theory and in most cases, this is amazing. This is a way better way to handle service than the competition. But here's the problem. Both Jesse and I have been bringing our Teslas in for service for years now, since 2016. And we have seen how the system really works. This isn't a gotcha. I would say usually Tesla service has worked pretty well. Yeah, I'd say about half the time Tesla service has done what's advertised and in some cases gone above and beyond. Many of the service techs and customer support reps we've worked with are outstanding people. What we're about to share with you is not a gripe session. We are doing this episode because we have a platform that people listen to, and we are honestly hoping that by sharing our experiences, thoughts, and solutions, that the people at Tesla that need to hear about this will hear about it and get it fixed. Even if that means some people may need to be fired. Problem number one, in my opinion, is that Tesla does not have enough service centers in certain parts of the world. Now, we live in New England. That's near Boston in the great state of Massachusetts. Massachusetts, even though it's a rather small state, not huge like California or Texas, we actually have one of the highest concentrations of Teslas in the world. That's right. If you look at Teslas per capita, Massachusetts is right up there at the top of the list. As of June 2021, Massachusetts had over 21,000 EVs registered in the state, most of those being Teslas. And yet... We have currently only three Tesla service centers in Massachusetts. Now, I know, I know, we should be happy, right? I mean, we just got our third one up in Peabody just a year ago. We've been waiting for that one for about two and a half years, by the way, from when it was announced. So I'm grateful. And I know for some of you Tesla owners who have had to drive for hours across state lines to get to a service center, you're probably jumping up and down right now yelling, what are you complaining about? But let's take a look at some numbers. If you drive an ICE car in the US, if you were one of the 275 million people driving an ICE car, then you have about 234,000 service stations to choose from. On average, that means for every 1,180 ICE cars, there is a service station. In other words, if tomorrow every ICE car in the country needed service, on average, you'd have about 1,180 cars in line to get service. So let's do the math. Here in Massachusetts, with let's say 20,000 Teslas and three Tesla service centers, that's 6,667 Teslas per service center. And wait, what's that? Oh, I hear you. I know that there are also Tesla mobile rangers, and I know I wasn't counting them yet, but we don't have that many of them. We estimate about six in our state. They only operate out of two of the service centers. And let me tell you, even though I think they're great, I mean, their mobile techs are second to none, and I can't imagine how they do it, through sweltering heat and blistering cold, but they are mobile, so they have to drive to each appointment, which means they can only see so many customers per day, no matter how efficiently they try to plan. We'll get to more of that in a minute. So I would only count all the mobile techs in the state at best as the equivalent to another service center. So let's do the math again, this time saying that there are four Tesla service centers in Massachusetts. That comes out to 20,000 Teslas divided by four, and you get uh, one service center for every 5,000 cars. And what was that ICE car average again? Uh, one for every 1,180. Now. I'm a Tesla fanboy. I'm an early adopter, and I was totally willing to put up with a less than stellar service center arrangement in the beginning. I mean, let's be honest, Tesla had some tight financial quarters a few times, so I know money had to be spent where it had to be spent. But if I'm not mistaken, Tesla has a fair chunk of cash in the bank now. Yeah, about $16 billion. And I think now would be a good time to spend it on more service centers because there are more Teslas coming. Yeah. So far, Tesla has produced a little over 2 million cars. 2022 is now here, and Tesla could quite possibly produce 2 million more cars this year. So that would double the number of Teslas on the road in the next 12 months. So taking our little Massachusetts as a microcosm of the world, that could mean that by the end of this year, there could be 40,000 Teslas on the roads here in Massachusetts, and still only three, but we'll say four, service centers to repair them. But Zach, hang on. Maybe you're blowing this all out of proportion. I mean, maybe when you visit a Tesla service station today in Massachusetts, it's completely empty. Uh, no. Jesse and I regularly visit all the service centers, and we hear from a ton of friends and fans in New England, and they are always packed to the gills. You cannot usually even find a parking space. The last time I went to Peabody, for example, for service on Sparky, I drove around the lot twice, couldn't find a space, so I pulled up to an employee and asked, and they told me to park in front of the garage doors, which... 
effectively blocked it in. I followed his directions, and then I heard another employee a few minutes later curse under his breath as he opened the door to pull out a car from the bay, and I was blocking him in. It's that bad. The waiting rooms are always packed, and you can't get an appointment usually for weeks. So let's do the math again, assuming four service stations at the end of this year and 40,000 Teslas. And by the way, if there was a new service station in the works, we'd have heard about it because the last time Tesla was planning one, the Peabody location we mentioned before, it took Tesla two and a half years to open it, and we heard about it through our contacts the whole time. But here's the math. 40,000 Teslas divided by four service centers, and that's going to be one service center for every 10,000 Teslas. Or in Elon terms, that's an order of magnitude, 10 times worse than ICE car service station ratios. No matter how good the system, the employees, the logistics, you can't make up for just the sheer number of technicians and lifts that you need to handle that many cars. And this is the first part of the problem. I believe that Tesla, being a Silicon Valley tech startup, they might believe that you can tech your way out of the problem. The app the mobile rangers, the computer updates, they are all amazing. But at the end of the day, you need people, service techs with screwdrivers and wrenches to solve most car problems. And Tesla, please, I'm telling you, you don't have nearly enough of them. Here's the problem. I don't think that Elon knows he has a problem. Look at Jesse and I, for example. According to data from Tesla, we are probably counted as happy customers, but we're not. And to illustrate this, let's just talk about a few of our recent service encounters. So right before the new year, I went out to dinner with Sparky and the family. After dinner, we went out to the car to drive home, and one of the rear seats wouldn't slide back all the way. I futzed with it. I searched YouTube and the forums. I rebooted. I couldn't fix it. So I opened my app and put in my service request. A mobile service visit was scheduled for a few days later, January 4th. Great, I thought. Then a couple days later, on December 31st, it was rescheduled. But wait, it was rescheduled for the same time and date. January 4th. So I was confused, but whatever. Still says January 4th. So great. I only have to live with my second row seat not allowing someone to sit in it for a few days. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. But then January 4th comes and goes, and no service tech arrives. The service appointment just gets canceled in my app without any warning. Then a day later, on January 5th, I get an email saying my service appointment is now scheduled for January 31st at the Dedham Service Center. Wait, so more than a month after you put in the request, and now you have to go drive down there? Yep, and I didn't reschedule it. In fact, we have to record a Tesla Time News that day. And here's the thing, I've been around long enough to know what's really going on. I think that original mobile service call looks to Tesla on their data spreadsheet like I'm a happy customer. I put in a request, a few days later, mobile tech scheduled, This second scheduling mysteriously popping up after my mobile tech was scheduled makes it look like a second service appointment. So from Tesla's perspective, when all is said and done, it will look like they handled two problems in one month, even though nothing's been solved yet. I could go on, but I'm interested in your latest service appointment, Jesse. So back in like October, I was driving through some heavy downpours at one point through a moderately sized puddle. Next morning, I go for a drive and immediately I notice a scraping noise. So I pull into a cul-de-sac, I diagnose the problem. Small piece of the underbody aero cover that covers my rear drive unit was ripped. Probably water or a tree branch ripped it and it's hanging down, scraping the ground. So I get some duct tape and I immediately put in my service request through the app. It's scheduled for like three weeks off. Okay, fine, the tape should hold uh, at least until then. So a few days before my appointment, I get a message through my app. Hey Jesse, we can do this with a mobile service visit. Great. Great. I saved myself a a trip. So I text back. That sounds awesome. Except now the service appointment is scheduled for December 2nd. That's another three weeks away. So I go put some more duct tape on and I wait. December 2nd rolls around and the service tech arrives in the mobile van and immediately tells me that he can't fix anything under the car, meaning that my aero cover is not going to get fixed. Wait, what? But I had put in the service request and somebody sent a mobile service van. But he says, don't worry. He'll reschedule me an appointment. I say, well, fair enough. It's not his fault, obviously, but no appointment gets made or rescheduled. So I messaged service to please call me because I was starting to get upset that this has happened. And I was worried because I had approved $200 for a quote for that mobile service tech to come out. Mm -hmm. I got a very brief statement saying that I wouldn't be charged. And then the appointment was closed. I couldn't message back. I could like leave feedback. And I did left my phone number. Please contact me. This is serious. Then wouldn't get back to me. So now I have to go making a new appointment. So now a full month off, January 5th. So I get a message from Tesla Peabody. We're sorry. They apologize for my mobile appointment, which is a nice gesture, but it doesn't address any of the questions that I have about why that happened. After this point, everything goes smoothly. I bring it in. 
They fix it. Took them an hour. But for the five minutes I was waiting there to drop off my car, the guy ahead of me in line in the waiting room talks to the tech, says, I'm here to drop off my car. Uh, the tech goes, all right, what's your last name? Yeah, you're uh, you're not on my list here for today. You're scheduled for nine days from now. The guy's like, that's that's weird because I definitely scheduled it for today. This is not some ruffian guy. This is he's wearing a suit, for goodness sake. I think he understands what his schedule looks like. And he goes, you know, I really wouldn't have scheduled it for that day because I'm only available Wednesday mornings. And so the tech says that he'd love to help him out, but that they're down a bunch of techs and they can't help him out today. And then he reschedules him for three weeks away. This guy probably already waited three weeks to have this appointment. Okay, so you heard that Jesse and I both had recent Tesla service problems. We're two YouTubers who get to use our platform to complain about our first world problems. Poor you. But because of our community, we hear from thousands of people every month emails, comments, polls, and we ask people all the time about your experience with the car. Most of the time you report back that your experiences are amazing. I wanna stress this. We are not looking to create problems that don't exist or blow problems out of proportion. But for instance, we asked on our most recent monthly Patreon live stream, that's where we hang out with our patrons and discuss all sorts of fun topics. We just put it out there. Hey, tell us about your recent Tesla service experience. And we heard from Annie up in Maine, whose closest Tesla service center is, Peabody, Massachusetts. It's three hours away. At first, she was lucky to have a mobile ranger drive up to her, and that's great. But he had to drive three hours to reach her one way. You can't tell me that's an efficient way to handle service long term. Just as an aside here, there are no Tesla service centers in Maine, New Hampshire, or Vermont. Now look, I get it. There are only about 2,000 EVs in Maine, 2,700 in New Hampshire, and only about 2,300 in Vermont. But Tesla, you need to open a service center in each of those states. First of all, if you want to have people seriously consider buying a Tesla in one of those three states, you have to have a service center there. Secondly, for many northern Massachusetts residents, a quick trip up to, say, Manchester, New Hampshire would be quicker than a trip down through Boston traffic to Dedham. So you'd effectively be helping service in Massachusetts as well. Thirdly, you can't have Annie, who relies on her car, to drive three hours one way to go to Peabody, only to be told when she gets there, here's an Uber voucher to get home. Are you kidding me? See, this is the Silicon Valley problem right here. Not everywhere in the country has Uber availability. And even in Peabody, where there are some Ubers, Annie had to wait an hour just for an Uber to get to her at the service center. What the f***? And you didn't even have a loaner for her. She just traveled from Maine. And then what, she's going to call for an Uber? in the middle of Maine. Hey, please pick me up. There's no one coming. What is this going to do for your reputation, Tesla? Annie is a super nice person. She made a day of it and she visits Salem for a getaway. Most people are not Annie. They will be so upset if they get treated this way. They will put it on their social media. They will tell their friends and family how poorly they were treated. And you know what? This will have a huge impact on future sales. If people hear that you can't get your Tesla fixed promptly, that will become your reputation, Tesla. Up until now, it's largely been early adopters like us buying Teslas, and we all know that early adopters have a much higher tolerance for this kind of thing. But regular people, they will not tolerate bad service. The last three times we were at Peabody, we heard from Tesla employees. The first time I was told when I complained about the long time I had been waiting for my car to get fixed, yeah, I'm so sorry, we've had a bunch of texts not come in. I assumed it was a COVID-related thing, and, and I understood. Hey, hey, I get it, you know. But that was three months ago. Then we were up there a couple times in the last two months and we got, oh, I'm so sorry for the delay, but we're having a hard time finding qualified service technicians. Now, hang on. <laughs> I, again, understand a couple weeks, even a month where COVID related stuff throws off your whole game. But now I'm hearing you just can't find qualified techs for months. I'm sorry, but that's something way bigger. It's either incompetence of management or management with its hands tied because of wages. Tesla, look. You need to do whatever you need to do to get a lot of qualified techs. And I want to take a little aside here. I think that a lot of people point to Tesla employees getting Tesla stock. And I think that's awesome. But I think you have to understand that in different places in the country, different um, cultures think of it differently. And I think if you're a tech and you're like, you're not going to get a very good hourly wage, but or you're going to get Tesla stock. I'm sorry. A lot of techs who aren't into Tesla might be like, yeah, I don't want the stock. I want the pay. And if you're not like, I'm a stock guru guy, <laughs> getting stock is not like 
a big present for you, it's kind of a big hassle. Oh, now I have to understand. Oh, I have to get an account. I have to have a brokerage. Uh, Capital how do gains I sell tax, them? Yeah, right. I have to sell. Like, that's a huge bunch of questions that uh, some service techs might not want to have to jump through. And imagine they come home and they're like, honey, I got that new job at Tesla. Right. And like, you got a pay decrease from BMW? Right. People might not like that. They might not understand that the stock is like super valuable or it might be really hard for them to exercise those options. And look, I want to go back to the app. The Tesla app is great, but when it comes to servicing a car, there are times when you need to talk to a person. Annie's case is a perfect example. Someone at Tesla in three minutes could learn that Annie needs her car. She lives in Maine. She'll need a loaner. I know that many millennials like me and Gen Zers are very happy to never speak to anyone on the phone. Um, and that's fine. But a lot of people buying these rather expensive cars will be older and they should at least have the choice to speak to a thoughtful, experienced, empowered Tesla employee who can probably solve more problems and will give customers a sense that they are being cared for. Now, look, I know you really don't want this job, Jesse, but if I were VP of special operations at Tesla, I would be going into Tesla service centers undercover. Hey, there, everybody, uh, what's going on? I'm just a regular customer like you. I would be presenting a run of the mill service problem with my car and talking to employees and other customers in the waiting room, finding out what their pain points are, what worked for them. I would be identifying the logistics problems, the stupid decisions that have a cascading effect. You know, I would be striving to make every customer so incredibly happy with their experience, just like they are with the car itself. But you know what I experience when I'm in the waiting room? I hear from people who don't know things about their cars. Why won't my car connect to Wi-Fi in my driveway? My handle seems to get frozen stuck. Is that supposed to happen? Have a support line where they can call with helpful, happy Tesla employees who can answer these problems and expand the knowledge base and make sure those people on the phone actually drive Teslas. Because what I can't stand is many of the techs and service center people still don't drive their own Teslas, so they don't get the cars. I mean, they can fix them. But if you don't drive them every day, then you just don't get the little things about the cars. And that's a really good point. And that's another thing I would fix. I would have some cars there, the loaners, that techs can take home. It's another perk of the job and it would make them experts. I would do that for the salespeople too, but that's another topic. <laughs> and here's another thing I would change if I were in charge at Tesla. I know this is gonna be controversial, but instead of pushing out every last car at the end of every quarter to new customers, and look, I want everyone waiting for a Tesla to get their Tesla as soon as possible. But instead of doing that, Make enough parts and get those parts distributed around the world to all the service centers so that they are waiting for them when customers come in with problems. We spoke with our buddy Graham in Australia. He has been waiting for a replacement side view mirror for his Tesla since November. Come on, Tesla. You have the data. You know how many customers are going to need what part. You probably have that data down to the bolt. Sorry, wrong, wrong word. Down to the nut and washer. So why not prioritize having those parts on hand before they're needed rather than after? It would make such a difference and speed up service times by so much. And if you just had one big quarter where you said we made a whole bunch of parts, that would last for years because then you could be doing the little piddly amounts that you've been doing up until this point and you'd be able to maintain it. So basically, instead of an extra 3,000 cars, last quarter being delivered, take those parts and distribute them. You don't need every last car sold like you did a few quarters ago, Tesla. It's just so short-sighted. Look, I know you can't quantify what we're talking about here. I know there's no easy way to count a future happy customer like you can count a car delivery, but I'm telling you that even though you can't count it, it will count. A happy customer who doesn't have to wait for a month to get their car fixed may not immediately post on social media, but I can promise you that a disgruntled customer who does have to wait or gets rescheduled too many times is going to one day snap and say, screw this, Tesla service sucks, I'm not gonna buy a Tesla again and I'm going to tell all my friends about my experience. I can point to YouTubers who have started as Tesla fans and now are Tesla haters. Why? Because they felt mistreated. You cannot take a Silicon Valley look down your nose approach to customer service. And unfortunately, Tesla, in many parts of the world, you have hired people who are not the right fit. They care more about faking their metrics and padding their resumes than they do about the most important thing, customer satisfaction. Or you've given them no choice. You've basically made it so that the system will only work if you pad numbers. And that's not good. And if you need proof that what we're talking about is real, take this story from The Drive about a Tesla Model 3 performance that was delivered with the missing brake pad. 
We've researched the story and it seems pretty legit. April Gilmore took delivery of her Model 3 performance on December 19th and noticed a worrying scraping sound coming from her rear driver's side wheel when she braked. She contacted Tesla service on December 20th and was told there was no appointments available for three weeks. She then recorded this video and she sent that video to her Tesla service advisor only to be told the brakes sound normal for a Tesla Performance Model 3. She then visited an independent local Tesla shop, which I assume there, I mean, there are no such things that I know of. So I assume she went to her local, you know, brake place. And there the technician removed the wheel and discovered the missing brake pad. Is that it? No. Only after she sent in that video did her Tesla service center invite her in. Now I'm just gonna read here from the Drive article. At the time of service, Gilmore says Tesla had no loaner to offer her. One has since been given, albeit with expired tags, and instead supplied her with Uber credits to use. As her car was at the shop over a holiday weekend, she didn't have the chance to check in until December 27th, when she was told the parts were on order and that her car was expected to be ready on the 31st. That day, her car's ETA was pushed back to January 7th, on which date she was told parts still weren't available and that her car was being delayed to January 14th as a result. It was at this point Gilmore asked about having her car bought back, to which the Tesla service manager responded by offering to cover a payment. She accepted the offer, but also requested Tesla reimburse her for the $100 inspection at an independent shop. Tesla has since delayed her car's completion yet again, though this time by only five days to January 19th. She says, I have never purchased a new or used vehicle that was under warranty and had this type of experience with the service department. I absolutely do not trust the Tesla brand in any way. Not only did they deliver a car to me that was unsafe to drive, but they also blew me off about the noise the car was making, and now they're dragging their feet on making things right. If they can build and ship new Model 3 P's, then why can't they repair the ones that they've already sold to people? I had no clue that Tesla treated their customers this way prior to this experience. She went on to say, I'm going to see how things play out and whether or not Tesla tries to make this right. After all this, I cannot fathom that they would give me the car back with any issues, but I'm definitely unsure how I feel about keeping it or if I even want it back. At this point, I've lost days of my life to dealing with their mistake and their issues, so making a move to another brand of car is looking like a good idea. And I don't blame her one bit. And then The Drive finished their article by saying, since Tesla no longer has a media relations department, The Drive was unable to reach out to the automaker for comment. Yes, it's it's so interesting that Tesla doesn't have a PR department, but this is kind of where you'd want one. That's another video we've already made. So you can go watch that video if you want. I mean, April's experience is only out of the ordinary because they didn't install a brake pad. That's the only thing that makes it different from any other service experience that we've kind of been through. And look, I mean, I can even give Tesla a pass. I know you can't, but I can give Tesla a pass on messing up something at the factory. These things are going to happen. No, <laughs> I won't take that. I don't think that you can, you should ship out, especially Model 3 Performance without a, a rear brake pad. I, and I get it. I, I mean, it's I, look, it, it is better than sending out, say, an ICE car because you have regen braking. So that's nice. You can at least no, be slowing down. I guess what but, I'm saying is like, I can understand mistakes do happen. What I'm saying is that they were compounded here by the fact yes. that she reported the problem to Tesla immediately. Instead of them taking it seriously and saying, well, of course, let us send a Ranger out there. Look, a Ranger could have solved this problem. Yep. They can pop a wheel off. They can fix a brake pad. That's easy. They didn't. So that kind of makes you not believe in the Ranger service. Secondly, though, they could have said, of course, bring it on in. They didn't. They blew her off. They Or they could have told her, why don't you take it to an independent shop? Why right. did she have to make that decision? Right. Why? And then she, ha you know, she spent $100 to have someone basically take her wheel off and look at the brake caliper, notice that there was no pad, and she has to now get that reimbursed from Tesla. Then on top of it, when Tesla actually accepts the problem and has the car in for service, now you experience weeks of waiting for your car for something as simple as a brake pad and a you know few brake parts? Because this case, while anomalous because, you know, missing brake pad from the factory, the experience with Tesla service is so reminiscent of something that a lot of people that we've talked to have faced. And this points to a system that is on the verge of collapse basically you have tesla service and they don't have enough resources it's so blatantly obvious and so i don't want to be like pointing fingers at people at the service department how dare they don't treat alice with the proper respect and and take her car in they're packed they're booked they don't have enough service centers we talked about how there's like five thousand cars 
per service center. But of course, we didn't count New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont. Right. So you're adding an extra, mm, let's say, 6,000 onto that. That just made it worse. Mm-hmm. It's making it even, it's already at 6,000. It's going to be getting higher and higher. This problem will only get worse as there are more Teslas out on the road. Tesla needs to make a serious effort to increase their service budget dramatically. And I would love it if our feedback surveys were being listened to. Trust me, we've reached up through the ranks to find out where the problem is, but we don't have the power to get to the bottom of it or do anything about it. I don't think that anyone at Tesla is going to do anything about this besides Elon because they're not empowered to. Now, listen, if you're upset about this like we are, we urge you to tweet this video to Elon. I want us to be the VPs of special operations. I want to find out where the problems are. We will get to the bottom of it. We will solve it. And we will do it all for free because we love Tesla. Now, you know what to do. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see. So leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.